Hello, welcome back to Engineering Circuit Analysis. We're talking about the integrating amplifier configurations. We're going to solve our first problem after having gone through some of the basic ideas in the previous couple of lessons. And our first problem looks like this. Uh, we have a typical integrating amplifier configuration. We have the non-inverting terminal grounded. We have some input signal, which you'll see in a second is a square pulse, that's driven through a 100 kilo ohm resistor. The feedback uh, mechanism is a uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So uh, again, these integrating amplifier circuits, they look just like inverting amplifier configuration uh, other, uh, other than the fact that instead of a resistor here, we put a capacitor. And we've already derived what the output relation looks like. We're pulling the output from the same location and we have the, uh, the uh, power supply is plus minus six volts. Now the interesting thing here is this is not a constant five volts, four volts. It's not a sinusoid, it's a square pulse. And the reason we're using a square pulse is because of how this problem is set up. What we have in the input is for one second, we go straight from zero up to 50 millivolts. And then at the one second mark, we drive straight down to negative 50 millivolts. These are vertical lines. And we stay at a constant 50 millivolts uh, until two seconds, in which case we go back up to zero and we stay at zero. So it's literally an up and then a down and then back up to zero and then we're done. It's a, it's a pulse, it's a square pulse, up, down, back up to zero, we're done. It's not a cyclic repeating thing in this problem anyway. We're also told that the initial capacitor voltage, which is the voltage across this capacitor, is zero volts, which is another way of saying the initial output voltage of this amplifier at time zero when we start right over here at zero, right before we go up, is is there's no output, there's no charge, so that's, that's a zero. And we're asked to write the equation for the output here as a function of time, the math, the actual equation, and then we also want to plot that to see what it looks like. Now the punchline is this problem is very similar to what we did in the last section. In the last section, I decomposed a square pulse, and we talked very uh, kind of abstractly about what was going to happen. Uh, and so if you remember what those graphs look like, the answers here are going to look very similar. The only difference is this is a real circuit with real numbers and a real input signal that's, that's uh, got real numbers. So we're going to get, you know, uh, concrete answers uh, in the end instead of just equations. All right. So what we need to do, remember I taught you that when you have a discontinuous jump like this where it just jumps or, you know, it could be like a triangle pulse would be the same thing. You'd have a, a jump there, a discontinuity. Anytime you have that, you need to break this up into regions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break this pulse up into region 1, going from 0 to 1 second. And we're going to break it up a second time to region 2, which is going from 1 to 2 seconds. Now when we say write the equation for the output, they're not going to tell you to break, break it up into regions. You're just supposed to know that. All right. So they didn't tell you write two separate output equations, one in the first window of time and then the second one in the second window of time. They're not going to tell you that and they're not going to tell you that on a test. You're supposed to know that if it's discon dis discontinuous like that, you break region one up and then you kind of find the output equation for that region and then you move to the second region. You have to do the whole thing again for that second region, you write an output equation of time in that second region. Both of those equations together govern what V out is uh, from one to two seconds, okay, over the entire region of time. Because before zero and after two seconds, there's no input voltage, so everything goes away anyway. But anyway, we're going to break it up into two regions. So let's just get, get after it. We have um, the region of time. Let me go ahead and divide, divide up here. We have uh, four the region of time, zero less than t, less than one second. The way you read this, t is greater than zero, but less than one second. That means we're in this window of time right here. What does the output voltage look like? Well, we said that 